Natalia specializes in business strategy, leadership, team development, and personal development coaching. She works with business owners, managers, and their teams by creating strategies for success, clarity for improved efficiency, and developing interpersonal and leadership skills so that they may find themselves experiencing a greater sense of purpose and connectedness in their work, increased productivity and performance, and generate more satisfaction and financial success overall. Natalia, are you ready to rock this? Oh, so she be so <laughs> ready, ladies and gentlemen. Ow! Ooh. Oh my goodness, we're going to have a blast. Thank you so much for coming on today to share this wisdom with our audience. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. I'm super excited to be here. Yes. Awesome. 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 So we're going to dive right in to the theme of the day, which is upgrade your questions. And what that means is in life, you get what you focus on. And if you're focusing on crappy mm. questions and why, why isn't this the way I want it? Why am I not there yet? Why does mm -hmm. this person think of me like that? Oh, versus... <laughs> A res more resourceful question, you know, that, that resourceful question will get us better results. So Natalia, how have you upgraded your questions to really shift your reality? Um, I think that's a great question. I actually, um, I have had, I've been on my, you know, doing my show leadership live and we talk a lot about, you know, working with business owners and leaders to get them to um, increase their growth, increase their success, and also sort of troubleshoot what's happening in terms of like, you know, understanding the chaos that's happening within their, within their daily business or their daily work. And I always say like, sometimes asking the right questions is more important than getting the answers. Mm. And, um, and I think that that's ultimately what I see a lot of times when I'm working with other people. And then of course, even within my own life is that we aren't really, we're so hungry for answers and arriving mm. at the solution that we're really not thinking critically about the types of questions that we should really be asking ourselves when, where when we're struggling with something mm. and a lot of times what i see and i especially for myself is really um just trying to figure out the the quickest fastest route to ending you know the struggle that i'm in yeah. right and so when i catch myself there usually that comes from a place of desperation which mm -hmm. i think a lot of people are in this very reactionary place where that's what drives them to to in that direction mm -hmm. um but when i'm there i'm like okay obviously i'm trying to to sprint when this is a marathon you know and so then i settle down in myself and from that space and i say okay what really do you need to be asking yourself in order to uh, arrive at the outcome that you ultimately want? It's not about the answer. It's about arriving at your desired outcome. So having clarity around that and then asking the right questions from there. Yeah. So what I hear is like, what would it take to get to this point? Like focusing on the outcome, the results. It's like, what, what is that? What is the essence of that? Who do I have to become? What would it take yes. to reach that versus man, why is this not working? Why, why aren't we there yet? Or whatever other kind of negative or negatively implied or man, I just want that so bad. Why not? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Like, why isn't this happening? Mm. Or a lot of times, you know, what we hear often is who, you know, who didn't do what, right? Like, and so there's, it's so easy to blame somebody else or something else for mm. the reason why you're not, you know, receiving you know, the outcome that you want. And so it's really too, I think in asking the right questions, you're always putting yourself front and center and really looking at yourself from a place of, of self-awareness and yeah. reflection and saying, okay, well, what can I do right now to better improve my situation? And again, arrive at the desired outcome that I want, instead of again, looking outward and figuring out what's going what's going wrong outside of us. And I think within mm. business, people do that quite a bit, right? We're always looking at what's, what's dysfunctioning outside of us, like within the business business as opposed to like, wait a second, what can I do right now to really arrive somewhere that's, that's more meaningful than the place mm. I'm at. Mm. Juicy, juicy, juicy. I love this. <laughs> having lots of fun with questions. This is gold, 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 gold. So we're having fun right off the bat. And any, anyone who has any questions, drop them into the comments right now. If you're watching this uh, replay, let us know. Type in a, a comment on Twitter, at Be Your GPS. You know, let us know what you think of Natalia so far, diving into the juice. And Natalia, <laughs> we're going to dive even more into the juiciness let's of go. your journey. Easy. And before we get there, let's tell our audience a little bit more about what you're doing today, what you're creating, and who you are in the world. 
what am I doing today? Okay, well, I'm actually I'm super excited. I have decided to stop relying so much on um, what's happening through social media to drive mm -hmm. my business and really get out into my community, which is something that I often talk about, but haven't necessarily done a great job at. So I'm going to my first Chamber of Commerce meeting tonight yes. and i um, very excited about that and, and really just excited to get to know people and see you know what they're doing within their business. I really, I was thinking before I came on here, how how much I just love my work. You know, I feel so blessed to be doing something that really genuinely excites me. And mm. I, and that excitement comes from getting to know what other people are doing and what they're experiencing and what they're succeeding, where they're seeing like their triumphs and then also helping them overcome their, their challenges. So very excited to meet some really awesome people tonight. And then, um, what else I've been in the process of, of really upping my training game. And so that is, you know, oftentimes, you know, it's like we talk about business and we're just talking about productivity within business, but we're not thinking about how we need to show up for our business. And so I always think like, I need to show up like as a, as a warrior, right? Yeah. Like as a champion in the ring. And so, um, I've been really feeling like getting back into the swing of my routines and upping my, my workouts. So I got an awesome hit workout today. And then I'm also in the process of writing a book. So I'm just in, you know, doing my research and, and getting all that going. Dang. What are you writing your book on? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's called the leadership learning curve and mm. it's actually, it's a book for new emerging leaders, but it's also for people that are new to business. So whether that's, you know, you're new into a management position or you're new as a business owner. Um, I was, I found myself thrown into not only just a management position, but like in a position where I was running somebody else's business with zero education in this and very little support. And so I realized that that's probably the majority of people in these roles. And so, um, I just want, I wanted to write a book that would help serve as a, as a real functional guide to help people understand what's going to be expected of them and how they need to show up as a leader. Right. And then how they can engage with their teams. And then of course, how they can greater impact the organization as a whole. So, yeah. I already completed chapter one, so I'm very excited yes. about that. <laughs> when, when's it coming out? What's uh, do you have a projected date or? Um, not yet. I'm hoping to have it done in three months. Yeah. Um, Heck yeah. I'm looking at one chapter. I'm looking at one to two chapters a week, depending on you know, like chapter one was a pretty was pretty intense chapter. So um, I don't think I don't know if every single one of them is going to be that intense, but I also feel like it'll probably get part of me is like, it's going to get easier as I go on. And then the other part of me is like, there's probably going to be some walls that you hit, you know? So anyways, I'm giving myself three months and then we'll see how, how that goes. How did you outline the book? How did you like come up with that process? Did you start with the outline? Did you just mm -hmm. uh, brainstorm? Like, how did it work for you? Um, well, like you said, it's all about asking the right questions. Right. And yep. so, um, part of it was just asking myself, okay, where, if, if you were to go back to where you started, mm -hmm. you know, how would you have best been taught? Right. And so I, I really kind of framed it that way. And to mm -hmm. be completely honest, like a lot of it is as silly as it sounds, it's just downloads. Like it's not really, it's really just me receiving the information and giving, you know, and of course I have my experience. And so I'm, and I think that that's part of what makes, what's going to make this book fun to read is that you kind of get to see where all of the trials and tribulations that I went through and, you know, the mistakes that I made. And, and then hopefully that makes it really relatable for the reader. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I broke it down into three parts. So part one is going to be, uh, you as a leader, right? Mm -hmm. What, what the demands are going to be from you and how you need to prepare yourself. But, you know, I think a, a lot of times we think of leadership in terms of how we engage with other people and mm -hmm. we're not thinking about how we need to show up as a person and also really cultivating the sense of self-awareness and, you know, resilience and, and also knowing kind of where your, where your hangups are, because if there's anything that business, you know, when you're working in any kind of professional role where there's a demand on you, that's, what's going to pop up and you need to, you're going to need to know how to handle that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's part one. And then part two, again, it's all about now let's move into us working with the group and mm -hmm. let's try and take all this juicy information that we just learned about ourselves and translate that over into what it means to work with other people whose emotions are on the line, who are stressed, who are sometimes unhappy. Like mm -hmm. how do you show up as a leader trying to manage um, people who maybe aren't, aren't showing up and then how can we in, in, improve their engagement and, and really create a culture that feels good to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So, 
Speaking of, of getting the most out of our team, you know, we really wanted to cover strategy, strategy mm -hmm. and performance. And okay. we want to get the most out of ourselves as mm -hmm. well. So yeah. tell us more about that philosophy of how do we get the most out of ourselves and our team? We'll start with ourselves, but then we'll go into the team. Um, but in terms of strategy and performance, what do we need to know? I think everything comes down to preparation. You know, I think a lot of times, especially when, again, you're in the process of either building your own business or you're managing somebody else's business, both are very high stress positions to be in. Mm -hmm. And what happens again, when we're under that level of stress is that we tend to be in a mode, a reactionary mode where we're just kind of taking things as they come. And there's less of an, a sense of anticipation. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, somebody the other day was asking me, well, you know, who do you work with? And I was like, well, primarily I work with two, with two types of people. I work with either a business that is within its nascent, you know, its nascency, right? So it's like really early on, mm -hmm. um, within the first few years of development, or I work with businesses that have plateaued. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when it's the new business, like you said, it's, it comes down to asking questions and asking the right questions. And you go into something where you're highly skilled at the thing that you're trying to, um, trying to provide to the world, the service you're trying to give, the gifts that you're trying to offer other people, right? Mm -hmm but we don't necessarily know the technical components of running a business, right? We don't ne necessarily have that educational um, foundation either or experience. We have experience in the skill and the craft, but we don't necessarily have the experience in running a business. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with business owners and especially when it comes to how they're showing up, I think that they really have to one, really ha have this a plan of preparation. Like, how am I going? What do I want to do? Where do I want to go? You know, again, asking the right questions. Okay. If this is my desired outcome, how do I anticipate getting there? Right. And then, um, also what are the obstacles that I at least can foresee at this point getting in my way and how can I best prepare myself for those obstacles? You know, so really looking at it from that perspective. And then also like, who do I need to be in order to show up in my best capacity so that I can pr provide the greatest service possible, you know? So really, you know, again, holding yourself accountable to yourself and saying, okay, how do I need to show up? Am I getting enough rest? Right. Mm -hmm. Am I making sure that I'm, that I have healthy habits, right. Where I'm taking care of myself and making sure I'm getting through my day. I'm not just like, you know, it's like driving blindfolded, right? You don't want to drive blindfolded when it comes to your business. So, um, nor when it comes to your life. So you really want to know, like, where you're at, check in with yourself. You know, when I used to be a barista at Starbucks, like we would have to check the, the refrigerator temperature like four times a day. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, this sucks. Like, why do I have to check the temperature four times a day? But it's because you want to make sure that the refrigerator is functioning because it takes care of the very thing that you're trying to sell. Mm -hmm. Right. So how are we checking in with ourselves? Right. Mm -hmm. We want to be, make sure that we're checking in with ourselves on a regular basis too. Wow. So in terms of that, that checking in with our, ourselves, what's the biggest lie that people tell themselves when it comes to being aware so that they think that it's okay to not check in? I've got this. That's the biggest lie. I've got this and I don't need any help. Mm. And I think that, you know, um, the statistics show that only 16% of businesses, small businesses make it past their first three years, right? Only 16%. So, that's it. When you think about the amount of people that are going in and investing their, their heart, you know, their time, their money, their heart, their energy, their, their passions. And sometimes like everything that their family, they're de fully dependent upon this, right. Cause their family is at stake or, you know, whatever, what have you, um, they go in and I think sometimes people are so determined to, to see things through, but they're really not thinking about they see themselves as being the only resource, right? Or money that they have as being their only resource. And so they're very tight with the way that they use their money, right? They're very limited in their perspectives on things. And so they think that they can, they have to do it by themselves. Hmm. And then they don't, they also do not think about who do I really need to support me in this process? Mm -hmm. And who also do I need to hold me accountable? And also what don't I know? You know, we talk about, you know, the stages of learning and there's like, there's like the unconscious un incompetence, mm -hmm. right? Like there's, we don't know what we don't know. Um, but I think a lot of times we're not going into situations asking ourselves, okay, well, what do I need to know in order? What do I need to learn in order for this to be really successful? Um, and then who can I, who can I recruit to help me? 
in this process to ensure that success. Because, you know, if we're doing it by ourselves, you know, it's going to take a lot more time, which ultimately takes a lot more money. Right. And so you you have to think if you are not resourceful, then you will run out of resources. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So that's the biggest lies. I've got this and I don't need any help. Wow. So that's the thing that would like sabotage someone that would bring their progress or growth or ability to succeed as a whole to like a screeching halt if they don't have that in check. On the other end of the spectrum, what do you think is the biggest accelerator of someone's results and success? Ooh, let's see. I'm going to have to think about that for a second. I think that the biggest accelerator would have to be the exact opposite, right? Is, <laughs> yeah. is having a strong, having a strong um, connection with your community. Um, one of the, the last business that I was managing for, um, they did such an incredible job at just at, at connecting with the people around them. Like business mm. is not something that succeeds on its own. Just like it takes a tribe to raise a child, right? Mm. It's the same thing. Like raising, you have to think of your, of your business as a baby, right? Mm. And so what does the baby need? Like, especially when it's a baby, it needs so much attention. It needs so much love. It needs to be held, right? Like it needs to be nurtured and it needs to be fed, like all these things. And so it's the same thing with business, you know? And and you got to imagine like as a single parent, it's, it's hard, right? It's so much easier to raise a child when there's somebody else there with you, right? And you're not mm-hmm. doing it by yourself. It's even easier when you have an entire community that's rooting for you and supporting you and they're, um, they're on your behalf. Mm-hmm. So I really think, you know, having a strong community that believes in what you're doing. And then again, making sure that you know the right people to reach out to when you need help. And so, because again, I think that a lot of times I talk to, I'm a business strategist and people were like, well, what does that even mean? And I'm like, well, when people get stuck, I help them find solutions to overcome their struggles. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and again, I think the biggest thing that takes away from that is when people get stuck, they try to think about, they think about it within their own limited terms, right. Their own understanding and their own, you know, like creativity, but it's so much better when you have other people that can give you ideas. And, yeah. and so you can, you can be sound a sounding board for, for each other too. So yeah. leveraging your community, um, and also not being afraid to be creative. You mm-hmm. know, there's creative solutions out there. I think one of the biggest things that, um, the, I think the, one of the biggest contributors to accelerating business is being willing to go through iterations of yeah. yourself and not just say, oh, well, I've decided or we've decided we're going to show up like this. And then if that doesn't work, just say, well, we've already decided. And I was like, all right, well, let's let's go back to the drawing board and let's figure out what would be the next, the very next step that would take us even further in the direction that we want to go. Mm. Yeah, I also hear yeah. a constant, never-ending philosophy to innovation, to improvement. Because yeah, if absolutely. That's, if that's the case, then even if you get – whether the solution's workable or not – there will always be more and another opportunity. Hey, what worked about this? What didn't work about this? Okay, well, maybe now is not the priority time because it's like done is good and done is better than perfect kind of thing. And we can always go back to it later to refine it, to make it better. Right. And I think another thing too, and this was um, a friend of mine who works in, in, I think it's like biotech sales, something like that. Mm-hmm. Tech sales. I don't know. Something techie. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, you know, a lot of times what gets, what's gotten you here isn't what's going to get you there. Yeah. Right. And so, again, being self-reflective, recognizing that maybe what's worked temporarily is not going to be a good long-term solution, you know, and just not just being flexible. You know, you want to be fluid, really cultivate that sense of fluidity in your business and don't get, don't get rigid. You know, like the more rigid you become, the slower your growth is going to be. And eventually you'll hit that wall and that's it. You know, so it's a lot harder to recover once you've hit that point. But if you're just constantly checking in, you know, like, okay, it's like you want to get an oil, an oil check right? Every, whatever, 3,000, 5,000 miles, the same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. You know, so. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've seen some awesome philosophies and how we can avoid crashing and burning and also accelerate ourselves. I want to go back a little bit more to your, your journey and how you got started down this path and okay. let our audience connect with you a little bit more. And we understand that you're brilliant and we can see that and you're very <laughs> articulate and well-spoken. And we want to know who did you have to become? What was the journey? What were those defining moments to get to where you are today? Yeah. So that is, um, 
that was such an interesting story. So I had gotten into personal training actually. So the way like what landed me here was like five years ago, getting started as a personal trainer and starting my own personal training business for myself, which was awesome. And then I was up here in Northern California and it was going, it was just amazing. Like the growth I was experiencing was awesome. And then I just decided, oh, well, I think I'd rather be in San Diego, which is the, com- the competition and the saturation is just so much higher there, you know, in yeah. terms of the market. And so, um, I left Northern California to go to San Diego and, and try to do the same thing there. And I had a really hard time. And again, I didn't have a community. I didn't have a network. Um, and so I ultimately ended up going to 24 hour fitness to start as a trainer hmm. there. And that's kind of, you know, I'd, I'd worked for corporate, corporate organizations before, you know, um, but this was probably the biggest one that I'd worked like before it was like Starbucks or Pete's when I was a kid, right? Like 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So as an adult, I I think it was like my first corporate experience. And, um, and that was really when I think the learning for all of this started because, you know, I was thrown into a, you know, a role as a personal trainer where you had to sell yourself and it was all cold selling and, you know, relationship building and all Mm -hmm. of that. And, um, again, I, I was just so, so aware of the lack of support in, in positions like this, right? And I also got to see, you know, I was close with my manager um, and I got to see kind of the stress that she was under, but then also, again, the lack of leadership skills that she had. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, I think that's really when I started to pique my interest of like, well, if this is how most companies are running, this has got to be like taking out a lot of money, right? Because they're either losing employees or they're not being effective with their time. So I started asking these questions at that point. Um, I eventually decided to quit 24 hour fitness and try my hand again at building my own business Mm -hmm. as a personal trainer and struggled again. And so for those of you who are in, in business for yourself, the struggle is real, right? Um, and so, uh, I struggled again with that. And then I went into, um, I decided that I was going to find like a part-time job as, as an instructor somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I, I landed this job at a, um, kickboxing franchise that was new to San Diego. We were actually the first one, um, in San Diego. And Mm -hmm. so it was really cool. They were like, well, actually we want you to be full-time. And I was just like, oh, well, okay. Like I tried to do the full-time thing with my existing clients as a personal trainer. And then eventually I was, um, brought on as a, as a manager, like very quickly on it. And again, we hadn't even, we had just barely, we hadn't opened yet when I started as a full timer. And then we were two weeks into opening and in a very chaotic state, um, when I became the manager. Wow. And so, and again, this was like, not only was it my first time really managing somebody else's business, right. Um, I was having a hard enough time managing my own. Um, but then on top of that, I was responsible for managing the team. Mm. So I was thrown into the fire of the situation again with very limited support and, um, and then again, very limited background and education in this. And so I was running the business and leading the team. And I was just like, what am I going to do? So I just sought out resources to, to help myself and to educate myself as, as quickly as possible. And, um, I think it was, it wasn't until almost a year later that I found high performance Academy You know, we mm-hmm. were just there mm-hmm. together. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so, um, when I was, I had been really, again, just tr- desperate to become the best manager and, and, um, you know, best manager I could be for both the business owner and the team. And so I sought out high performance Academy and I was just blown away by Brendan Bouchard and his work and, and just kind of how his methodology, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, that's when I decided to become high performance coach. And so then I got certified in that I quit the kickboxing, you know, the managing the kickboxing place, and then got hired on to manage another studio. Um, mm-hmm. that was also the first in San Diego. It's amazing that, that my experience has been with like new businesses because yeah. it's a very hard thing, like launching a business and, you know, growing that business again, past that three-year mark. It's, I mean, it takes so much time and attention. So I think I was, I got lucky, even though it was really hard and grueling, like it was lucky. I was lucky to be able to see what goes into that and not Mm -hmm. just be like, not just be there, like sort of going through the motions, but be very much responsible for the success and future of of the business and of the company. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think from that, from that perspective, I just, I just found myself feeling so 
not only just passionate about it, but just in- intrigued. Like, what is the, what are the solutions here? Like what's, what's ultimately, what are the answers? Like, and I know that I can't be the only one struggling. And I know that these business owners can't be the only business owners who don't have a clue, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, so I just like, I, it just, it came, it occurred to me that it's just this, this sort of riddle that I mm. am fascinating, fascinated by answering. So yeah. So I've just pursued it as a, as a career. Yes. I love it. I love it. And I think one of the things that we have in val- in common, the values that we have in common is that curiosity, right? Mm-hmm. The curiosity. And we also love community being a part of a community, but like solving the problem. What are the dials right. that we got to turn on this thing to make it finally click and get everything yes. to work? What is the, the secret equation for leadership to be successful? And how can we go share that with people and empower them with that so that they can succeed yeah. and, and build successful businesses like clockwork? Yes. And there's so many moving parts, you know, and I think that that's what makes it so fascinating is that, you know, there's so many moving parts and most people just don't know what those are. And I think that I want to see, I'm so passionate about helping people experience success because they deserve the success, you know, and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be only 16% that make it past three years, you know, like, and so I kind of, I thought about putting this slogan on my website of like become a 16 percenter, you know, Mm -hmm. like I really, I want to help people. Um, cause it's, for me, it's exciting. And I think that that's another thing is that, you know, it's so easy when you're inundated with the stress and the challenge Mm -hmm. of it all to, to lose your passion for the thing that you're trying to do or to feel lost or to lose hope. And, um, I think it just takes one person to come in and just be fully enthusiastic and fully excited and be incapable of, because they have an outside perspective of seeing solutions, you know, and seeing what's, what's possible because it's, again, it's like, it's so much, it's so much harder when you're in it yourself in the pit to see the way through you know, but sometimes you get that little help. And I've had people tell me that they're just like, I could just feel how excited you are about this. (laughs) Like I am like, this is, it's, it's truly my passion. And I want to, I really want to see people succeed. So, Mm. so what was one of the biggest stumbling blocks you mentioned when you first started off, you're like, you didn't have necessarily the training. What were Mm -hmm. one of the biggest hurdles that you had to get over in learning how to manage and lead effectively and start a business? So I think the biggest thing for me, which is why I'm writing the book, it was the leadership component. So mm. it was actually, I think that, you know, my rational, logical mind, it's, I'm, I'm a Virgo. So I'm like, I, I see everything in terms of just like, you know, like very neatly organized and like, okay, this is how things are done. And my expectations, of course, are very high. Huh. And so, um, and so I, that part of it, like running the business actually came very naturally to me. Right. And then, I mean, I grew up with uh, my mom, like being in private practice, you know, my whole life. And so I saw her running the business and was very much a part of that. Like I, you know, I, I worked with her when I was growing up. And so I, I got that experience. Um, re- leading a team on the other hand was entirely different. And I thought like, I think the biggest mistake, and I think I see business owners that do this as well. The biggest mistake that I made was assuming that other people were as, as passionate and cared as much and also had the same work ethic that I had. Um, and so I was like, Oh, of course, everyone is going to show up to the job, like just ready to give, you know, go a hundred percent and, and put it all, you know, put, put their all in. And that was definitely not the case. And of course, you know, especially in the first experience when I was at the kickboxing gym, you know, I was working with, with young, like, you know, people in their early to, to mid twenties and where they, their work ethic needed to be developed. Right. Yeah. And so I just didn't know how, I just didn't have the skills to do that. And I didn't know how to communicate to them in a way that would help them. And so I was just, I think it was again, being very stressed out. I, I just lost sight of, of the communication component, which typically again, and what my trick, what my triggers were, what their triggers were, you know, there's just so much like leadership is really about is about human relationships and psychology. Right. Mm. And so I think that was like the, the biggest learning curve, which again is why I'm writing the title of my book is the leadership learning curve, you know, because it is, it's a learning curve. It's self-leadership is different than team leadership. So translate, translating that over and really getting to know who you are as a leader and Mm. also how to do that in the, in in the best way for the people you're trying to lead. So, Mm. wow. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, in terms of like someone believing that they can't do something or be a certain way, um, 
a lot, I know a lot of business owners feel stuck, like, mm. like, or, or they, they have like a, a stuck mindset. Yes. What are some yeah. solutions that you have to kind of break them up open to possibility or curiosity or to get them into trying new things? Well, the first thing that I would say is you, if you can hire somebody, hire somebody that you can talk to, yeah. even if that's not over the long term, even if it's just on a case by case basis, like it helps so much to have that outside perspective. And typically when you're paying them, you actually take what they're suggesting and advising you to do a little bit more seriously. Yep. Um, and so there's a little bit more, um, I would say it's not, it's more than just accountability. It's like, there's more follow through because you're like, okay, you know, I, I invested X amount of money in this person's insights. I might as well do something with it. Right. Um, I've seen time and time again that people, you know, seek out free advice, which there's nothing wrong with that either. Right. For, there's nothing wrong with free advice. But the thing is, is when you're getting advice from a peer, a friend, your local, someone in your local net network, chances are you're not going to follow through mm -hmm. or feel compelled. It's really compelling. You know, it's compelling action. And so I think when you're, again, when you're seeking out a professional's input and you're paying for it, it's, you're more compelled to take action than you would be if you were just having a conversation with someone who's just like, you know, giving you some ideas and being your sounding board. Um, but outside of that, as far as like, you know, what you can do for yourself, um, finding a sounding board, you know, you know, asking people that are in your field, reaching out, mm -hmm. making connections with people that are in your field who've already, who have, are experiencing the success that you want to experience as a business, right. And who've, who've gone beyond the point that you're at, you want to seek out their advice and their, and their help. Um, I also think that you want to touch base with your, with the community that you're serving too mm -hmm. often. I think that, you know, biz, I see business owners that aren't really, they're so concerned with the business and then also with the service that they're not really re getting feedback from their customer base, right? And so oftentimes the answers to where you need to go are within the, are within the people that you're actually trying to serve, mm. you know? So reaching out to them, getting their insights, getting their feedback, what would they like to see, you know? And what, what are the new things that they want to see or what are the things that they really love that are being done really well, mm. you know? Um, and not being afraid to get their input. And then the last thing I would say is, is touching base with your teams. You know, a lot of times the people that are, that we have hired to, to, to do the work, they, they're, because they're, you know, doing it firsthand, right. They can experience the setbacks and, and, and they understand them more intimately because they're, again, they're kind of like on the ground, you know, so what's their experience been? What are they seeing? What are they hearing? How do things feel? You know, yeah. so it's, again, it's all about asking questions and really for this particular, um, you know, solution you, this is about who, who do I need to be talking to? Who do I need to be asking these questions? Who can really help me see what I'm not seeing? Um, and then again, right there, you've got three people, three resources that are going to be giving you all this input. And then it's mm. just a matter of being creative. And like you said earlier, in innovation, you know, yeah. not being afraid to change and, and give up what's not serving you, you know, like that's really, I think so many people get stuck in what, what they think is working and it's not working for them anymore. And so it's like, all right, it's time to change it up. Like, don't be afraid to, to change things up and to test things out. You know, like you're, you're really not going to lose out on much if it does, even if it doesn't work out, you know? So, so you shared about like how people can get unstuck and be open to that feedback. I'm curious for you. What is one of the most challenging yet rewarding types of businesses or situations that you in, enjoy coaching or that, that is like really difficult for you or one of the biggest challenges or problems where you like bang your head against it every time and you're like, I don't know how to do this, but then you like when you actually get the breakthrough, it's, it's the most rewarding. Do you have anything like that? Is it within, are you talking about like me within my own work or me when I'm helping other people in their work? I would say you coaching other businesses. Okay. Yeah. Kind of and, okay. Then, and then you could do you too. Yeah. I mean, both. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So great questions, by the way, you're asking really, you're a great interviewer. I really Thank like you. asking really awesome questions. Um, so I think that there's two things that I've seen that I've, sh that have been the biggest, I would say the biggest struggles where I'm just like, I get off of a call and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I dealt with that the right way. And mm -hmm. I think the first 
or I don't know, not about the right way, but like if there was a better way, you know, like, you know, where I'm just like, huh, how do I get this person? Cause some, you know, with coaching, you're a coach, you get it. Like, you know, you have, you know, that somebody is trying to go somewhere, but right. oftentimes it's just, they're just not ready to go. And so, um, just recently I was working with somebody who had two projects that they were sort of quote, quote unquote committed to accomplishing. Right. And mm-hmm. they were business ideas. So both independent of each other, mm-hmm. um, one starting one business is hard enough. Starting two that are unrelated is a whole different monster. And so, um, I think, you know, and then on top of that, not really having, not having clarity about how this process is going to go, go under. And mm-hmm. so I kept having, we had about three calls and they were just kept asking, well, what do I do? And how do I do this? And this and that. And I'm like, I'm not hearing, I think the reason why you're not seeing the progress that you want to see in your business is because one of these is the thing that you ultimately love, but Mm. are fearful of pursuing. Mm. And the other one seems easy, but you're not passionate about it. Mm. And, and so I think that, you know, one, I had, I was just had to be honest. I just had to be really honest about my observations in that moment. Um, and then also I think it comes down to, just calling it like we see it, you know? And so ultimately it took one more call to help this person really see like, okay, yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. Like this Mm -hmm. other thing. And the thing is, is they were investing all this energy in the project they thought could be more immediately successful, which again, more time and energy in something that potentially could be successful, which Mm -hmm. still wasn't yet. Mm -hmm. Um, while not investing energy in the path in the thing that they were very passionate about that could also be successful, but they didn't believe was going to be instantly successful. Hmm. Now, the way I had to frame this was like, think about the amount of energy that you're spending in doing something that you're not passionate about, but that you think will be successful. And think about that energy instead being put into the thing that you're absolutely passionate about that Hmm. could very well be successful if you actually just gave it some attention and you believed that it it could be possible to make it successful. Totally want to speak to this perfect example. My best friend and I, we started a network marketing company, joined a a network marketing company Mm -hmm. when we first were beginning our entrepreneurial journey, you know, five Mm -hmm. and a half years ago. I had no idea what the hell I was doing, right? An entrepreneur, personal development, what what Mm -hmm. the heck is that? I don't even know, right? I'm going to school for electrical (laughs) engineering. So we joined this company. We're in it for a year, doesn't work out, didn't make the amount of money that we were intending. Uh, We gave it our best shot though. Mm -hmm. And so he joins a real estate investing club and I'm like trying to figure out what the heck I want to do with my life, right? And he wants to get me to go to this real estate investing club. And um, I'd been doing Toastmasters and like focusing on public speaking and like kind of Mm -hmm. that route. And Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, you know, just real estate doesn't pull me. It doesn't sound like fun. You know, it just doesn't, doesn't seem wasn't like, resonating with you. Exactly. It wasn't resonating. And so he kept going down the real estate, real estate, real estate. And I kept going down coaching, coaching, coaching. And it was interesting because like that difference in perspective, like I knew I didn't want to do real estate and I didn't want to spend my time there. I wanted to develop myself in terms mm-hmm. of leadership and helping people and being connected and breaking pr- mm-hmm. people through their BS. So it's like, I knew that that coaching was my way. And, and it's just interesting that when we are so clear on what we value, but we, we, I, I, I invested in some real estate investing courses and I was like, this isn't for me, you know? Yeah. And I was able to so easily earlier on choose the, the place that I wanted to, to invest my energy. So I love, I love what you're talking about. Cause when you trust that gut instinct, when you follow that, it may not be, you know, you may, it may not get the money as quickly necessarily, but right. if you're enjoying it and you're loving who you're becoming in the process and you're proud of that, then it's like, it's so worth it. Right. Absolutely. And I think that ultimately there's always a whisper that you mm. hear, right. Mm. And it's, it's a very, in my opinion, I've experienced it in subtle and not so subtle ways, but always there of mm-hmm. like, this isn't the thing, this isn't the thing. Mm-hmm. And also too, when I just think it's so important to observe within yourself, when you're experiencing a high level of resistance to something, um, to really ask yourself, what is it about this experience that is cause evoking this reaction in me? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, why is it, is it that I'm, I'm not confident in this process? Do I not see myself as being successful as a real estate investor? Mm-hmm. Right. Or is it that this thing isn't the thing that I really, that likes me up from the inside, you know? And again, it comes down to asking those questions and being a little bit more critical, but really willing to look inward, um, in this process, you know, cause I think a lot of times, again, 
you know, people feel the resistance, but they keep moving forward. And literally that process is like running through water. Mm. And when you're in that process, it's just as energy consuming as it would be to in- endure the challenges, pursuing something that you love and that you mm. care about. And that the thing is, is the reward afterwards. So you can spend all this energy running through water towards something that you don't care about, right? Or that doesn't, again, resonate with you or that you're in alignment with, or you can do the same thing, pursuing something that you that absolutely sets you on fire. And the challenges, the reward at the end would make all of the challenges worthwhile, yeah. you know? And you have, and, and it's just, which, which suffering really, it's like, which suffering would you rather go through? Yep. And this is ultimately how, um, how I had to have this conversation with one of my clients, but it was how did, you know, presenting that in a way that he would understand and receive. And I mean, mm. he's, you know, he, I have great clients. So I'm blessed for that, you know, but, um, on that, um, on that note, you know, I've also worked with somebody who was less receptive to that guidance, right. And who was more kind of stuck in seeing and, and really just wasn't able to see beyond their own limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what, what, what it comes down to, and as a coach, um, you know, I'm here to help people go where they want to go, yep. you know, and if, if, even if I can see their success, if they continue to grow and develop themselves in the direction that they're going again, if they themselves don't really want to go there, then they have to ultimately make that decision. Yeah. And then it's about me supporting their new direction. And I think that having, again, just as much as you want to have flexibility as someone in business, you know, with the way that you're moving forward in your business, I also have to be flexible with the, with where my clients want to go, you know? And so it's not always about that the outcome needs to be set in stone. Um, I think sometimes, you know, everybody has their own journey and how, and how they want to go, go about getting to where they want to go. And my job is just to help make that path a little bit easier. Mm. So. Yeah. I know we were, we were talking about when we're at the high performance Academy with Brendan, we're talking about like, if someone's not ready, you know, what if a business owner's not ready to, to take, to do what is necessary. You know, they haven't built up the why they haven't built up the discipline, the, the willpower, the, you know, like the seeing the vision clearly, like what, what do you do then? Yeah. I mean, I can't care more for the outcome of my client's business than they care right. themselves, you know? So, um, I think that really what it comes down to, and, and thankfully I haven't had, I'm trying to think if I've ever been I maybe have been in that situation once where I was working with somebody, um, in this situation, it was a trade. So there wasn't any financial loss, thankfully. Um, but you know, I think you really want to make sure that the people that you're working with are, um, you know, you want to make sure that they're the right people, that they're in alignment, right. With themselves and also with you. Um, but again, also too, like if they're, if they're really not ready and you've been working with them for a while, like maybe it's just, it's just a matter of where you're focusing and the approach that you're taking, you know, again, there's always, there's, there's so many different paths that can be taken, you know, it's just a matter of the approach and the perspective. Right. And so if you look at a map, you're going to see, you know, different routes to get to the same end goal. Right. And one, there may be lots of traffic. The Mm -hmm. other one is it's the shorter route, but there's lots of traffic. And then the other one's the longer route, but it's completely open lanes. Right. Mm -hmm. So take, you know, I, I guess you could say that I'm a, um, I promote the, the idea of taking the path of least resistance, mm-hmm. you know? So if, if it's a longer route, but the lanes are open, then let's go for it. You know? Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I don't think you have to fire a client at that point. You know, like I haven't, I, you know, I think sometimes it comes down to firing them if they're really not willing to do the work, you know, but you want to make sure no matter, and this is goes for anybody in business that it's worth your time as much as it's worth anybody else's time. So if you're not enjoying the process, then maybe, you know, it's, you got to make sure you cut your ties, you know? Yeah. And I think the, the big thing is as a coach, it's our responsibility to show up as someone who says like, you can do this. Like I right. believe in you, you can do this. You can find out the solution. You can break through whatever bullshit you're going through. Like, and I'm here as your cheerleader, your champion, your accountability partner, your coach, whatever, right. right. To make sure that you, if you really want this, you know, if you really want this, then we'll figure it out. Do well, you really want this and get so them to like buy in? Yeah. So I think that I agree with you, um, to the extent that that's exactly the thing is the, this, Mm, the, this component, do you really want this? This, So sometimes what they think they want is not really what they want. Mm. Right. And so they go into something and this is, again, this, this is sort of what, um, the, 
the process of coaching is, is to help somebody arrive at their true desires, you know, mm-hmm. and then of course, get through, get past the limiting beliefs that really hold them back from one from embracing the thing that they want most. Right. Yeah. But oftentimes, like, I mean, even for myself, like, um, and I feel like a good example of this is I thought I was going to go into education. Like mm. I love education. I love learning. Right. I love helping people learn. I think that like, I think that is just the, the biggest gift that we have, right. As being in being human, right. Is this ability to constantly learn and refine and, and make progress. And so I was so passionate about education and I thought that I wanted to be, to be an educator, like to go and, and become like I was going to go to the American University of Cairo to get a double master's in public policy and uh, comparative education, right? Wow. And um, thinking I wanted to go into academia, and then I went I taught abroad for a little while, right? And I had to be honest with myself and just say, "Oh my God, like I love education, but I hate teaching," as in the traditional sense of the yeah. word. Yeah. Right. So my, this at the time, if somebody would have been like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Like I probably would have been an awesome teacher. I mean, I was an awesome teacher, but it wasn't the thing. Right. right. And I, I know, so I had to be willing to say, this is not my, this, mm. right. Like, so then it was a matter of figuring out, well, what is, what is the true desire? What is the true path that I want to take? Right. Um, so sometimes it's like, it's not, it's like, Again, there's a path that's short and direct with lots of traffic, or there's a path that's a little bit longer with less traffic. And so it's just a matter of switching, switching paths. So then it sounds like as a coach, it's not our, it's not our responsibility to say, do you really want this? But Hey, what, what do you really want? Tell me again, what you really want and why? Like, tell me why, you know, like, I just want to hear, I want to check in with you. Are you connected to who you are and what you want and why you want it? Yeah. Are you connected to this? Yeah. You know, is yeah. this the thing that you are connected to? And if it's, if it's not my, my perspective is that yeah. if it's not the thing that they're connected to, that we originally got on to do the work for, mm-hmm. right. That we can change that. Totally. And so now, yeah. okay, let's shift gears. Okay. Yeah. If, if this, if this isn't it, then let's, let's figure something else out that it is and, and let's go for it. You know? Yeah. And, and I think also too, like we're so, it's so easy in our culture to feel like once we've made a decision on something that that we have to stick to it. Right. Again, same mm-hmm. thing with businesses, right? Businesses are like, well, we're doing this and this is how it's been done for years and years and years. And we're sticking to it. You know, it's like, it's not serving you anymore. You've got to, you've, you've evolved, you've grown, you know, like got to make some changes. So, um, same thing with one-on-one coaching, right. Is just this willingness to say, okay, well, maybe this is what you thought you wanted. Right. It's and now instead we're going to pursue this route and be flexible and, and that's totally okay. And mm. creating more flexibility around that. You know, I think I've spent, maybe this comes back from being in my early twenties and feeling like a failure because I, I, I still hadn't figured out the right thing yet, you mm. know? And so it's like, that sucks to feel like just because you chose one thing and then you ultimately decided that it wasn't the thing for you to feel like you've failed. Yeah. Right. So I try to bring that to my clients and saying like, look, like let's, ha- let's take this opportunity to explore, right? Mm-hmm. Like let's, mm-hmm. let's just, let's give ourselves some, some flexibility here and, you know, really figure out what is the thing. Like with the first client I was telling you about, it's like, well, you got two options here, <laughs> you know, which is the one that you really want. Yeah. So yeah, it's a re- really practical like view of it. Right. And we could also come from more of a spiritual view of like, what's the gift? What's the learning lesson? How is this? Yeah this where you're at perfect you're fifty thousand dollars in debt how is this perfect you know like you have to you learned a lesson you get to create something from from nothing you get to have the comeback story to inspire you know tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions of people whatever it might be it's like there's always a lesson to be learned throughout this right right and it's preparing you for ultimately it's all preparing you for the thing that you're the thing that is this yes. right yeah. so and that's that helps a lot when we can have that perspective but it's hard to have that perspective by yourself and i think yeah. again that just goes back to how we started this conversation is really having getting the right support and being willing to to do some some self investigation you know i think when we can give ourselves permission to explore ourselves one of the quotes that i've put in my book is to know thyself mm. you know it's like give ourselves permission to figure out who we are because sometimes we're just reacting because yeah. we and we're feeling pressure to be a certain way without and just out of touch with yeah. what it is that's really front and center so yeah And I know a a thing that probably popped up in people's head, some people who may be going through this is, I don't have enough time to stop and slow down and know myself. It's like, tell that thought, 
thank you for sharing. And <laughs> like, yeah. this is of the utmost importance. Yeah. You know, if you don't feel like you're getting traction, if you feel like you're spinning your wheels, if you feel like off track, feel exhausted, like take that time. You, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your life, the path of your life, the direction of your life, the peace, the love, the fulfillment of this journey called life. You owe it to 100%, yourself. 100%. I think I was, I don't know when I was having this conversation, um, a while back with somebody, but the last thing I want, the last thing I want when I, when I'm like on my deathbed mm. is to, is that feeling of like looking up, feeling like I went through my entire life not doing anything that I really wanted to do, wow. you know, like what the sense of regret, you know? And so all we have now, before we get to that moment, all we have now is this moment to do exactly that. Like you are so who we are to ourselves is so important. Right. And that is the thing that's going to make it going to bring fulfillment and joy and, and just amazing experiences to our mm -hmm. lives. So do you, right? Like, do you figure you out and, 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 and really give yourself the time now because mm. the longer you wait, the longer it's going to take. And that's another thing too, right? Is like people bemoan it now. They're like, oh, well, I don't have the time to do it now. Mm. And it's like, okay, well then five years from now, you're still saying the same thing. You haven't done, you haven't done anything different, mm -hmm. you know, but what if you change now? What if you take that step now of really looking in and figuring it out? Where could you be in five years, you know? Yeah. And it just changed the frame a little bit. Yeah, and, and in addition to like like changing everything, right? This whole new direction. It's like even if you can only spend five minutes a day. Like, yeah. This is what I'm doing making me happy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, or like what do, what could I do that would make me really happy? Yeah. You know, like yeah. give ourselves permission. It's like we're too lim – again, I think I've been really feeling this lately that we spend a lot of time limiting ourselves and it's like – just go for it. Like, you know, like stop, it's stop feeling like stop. We need to stop pigeon, pigeonholing ourselves. Oh, so I know you probably were short on time here, but, um, <laughs> you know, I think that, you know, another thing that I see happening again, this goes just personal development and professional development. They go hand in hand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so everything that we're talking about here can be applied either to as an individual or as a business. Mm. But, um, I was the other day I, I heard from somebody like, well, I'm tired of everyone telling me what I can and cannot do. And I was like, who, I would like to know who is telling, who is this everyone that's telling you <laughs> what you can and cannot do? Like, who is the person, who are the people that are telling you that what you want to do is bad, right? Or that it's not a good idea or that don't believe in you. Like, right. let's come up with the list of all of these people. <laughs> because if we were to sit down and really write a list of those people who do not, who are trying to tell us what to do or think we can't do something or don't believe in us, I think that list is probably a lot shorter than the people who we have rallying behind us in full support mm. of our, of who we want to become and what wow. we want to do. That's you a know? good, what a good list to create. Who believes in me? Who are the people yeah. who like believe in me and support me in my life? I would have like hundreds. <laughs> right. And if you woke up every morning to that list and you're like, woo, like my tribe, they are on fire for me today. You know, like just believe it. Like, and if that, if you feel like that list is short, then my mm. friend, you are hanging out with the wrong people, you mm. know? So, and again, whose responsibility is that? Like, you stop hanging out with people who are not encouraging you and don't believe in you, right? Like turn your attention to the people who love you and who want to support you and champion your cause. Like, you know, create that community, you know, mm. and, and let's stop blaming people for that. Let's stop blaming the, the people who are, you know, naysaying and start really turning our attention to the people who are like, yes, let's go, you know? Mm. So. Amen. Natalia, this has been amazing. How do people stay connected with you and what do we want them to do next? Oh, yeah. So uh, for those of you tuning in, if you want to stay connected, you can um, like my Facebook page. It's Natalia Sanchez, small business strategist and leadership development coach. Um, I do have a group that's on my, my personal page as well. You can add me as a friend, send me a direct message. Um, yeah, that's Facebook is the way. <laughs> <laughs> you can awesome. also check out my website, MGMT Elite Coaching or no MGMT Elite .com, But it's just a website. Love it. Just the website. You yeah. you want the real deal. You want the in-person, high-touch, everything yeah, that is connect. Natalia. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I love sure. it. You are amazing. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on today. You're a rock star. We're excited to see the book launch. You can definitely come back on the show when that happens and tell us about that journey. would love to have you back and just keep up the great work. And we're excited to see you evolve and impact many, many people's awesome, lives. Chris. Thank you so much. It was, it was really a pleasure being on. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.